Hi honeys, it's Michelle. I'm here today to do a book haul. As many of you know, I recently started doing a card game for my TBR list each month, which I had so much fun with in September. And for September's TBR, I mean, I know it's still September, but I got to thinking though, some of the prompts that I did don't really have any books or maybe just have one. And I wanted to get a few more books so that they might even be able to be interchanged among uh, different tropes so that I can uh, continue to play this game and, and somewhat easily just kind of bounce between some of the tropes with the books that I have. Um, because of that, I think aside from maybe getting one new release each month, I think I'm going to go on um, somewhat of a book buying ban because I have so many books now to read, which is good. That's fine. If I keep reading as much as I've been reading, I should be through a lot of these books um, by the end of the year, if not by the middle of next year. <laughs> so I had started reading Charlene Harris's Harper Connolly series, and I think it's four books. So yeah, it's four books. And I've read the first two, and I decided to go ahead and get the next two. So the next one in the series is Grave Secret. Harper and her stepbrother decide to take a break from looking for the dead to visit the two little girls they both think of as sisters. But as always happens, when they travel to Texas, memories of their horrible childhood resurface. To make matters worse, Tolliver learns from his older brother that their father is out of jail and trying to reestablish contact with the other family members. Tolliver wants nothing to do with the man, but he may not have a choice in the matter. Soon, family secrets ensnare them both, as Harper finally discovers what happened to her missing sister, Cameron, so many years before, and what she finds out will change her world forever. So that sounds really good. Um, I also noticed when I opened it, there's a new sticker for me waiting inside. I bought these books at Better World Books, where you can buy books online. Um, they, they come from all different places. They come from people turning in books. They come from libraries, schools, used bookstores, what have you. Um, so sometimes they're in really good shape and sometimes they're not. It's kind of a toss up, but the prices are so affordable. If you are looking for affordable used books, I really recommend it. Also, if you're looking for collector's books, sometimes they have editions on there that aren't readily found other places. So far, I'm halfway through this series, and while I'm enjoying it, I'm not particularly attached to it in, in, in any way. I don't see myself rereading this series. So, the, and just in case you're wondering, that's why this book and the next one I got are both hardback, is usually if I'm collecting a series, I want them to all be paperback or I want them to all be hardback. However, I'm not planning on rereading this one. I just don't feel attached to it the way I did the Lily Bard series. So I am going to um, just go ahead and read these next two and then I will probably donate them or give them to the used bookstore or both. And I haven't cleaned these up yet. Usually I clean up my books before I read them, but I wanted to go ahead and do this haul as soon as I could because I was excited about the books that I found. I, if you're like me, I love watching hauls, so I want to share these books with you. Um, this book came from the Santa Fe Springs City Library. And this one is An Ice Cold Grave. And this one says, Hired to find a boy gone missing in Doraville, North Carolina, Harper and her stepbrother Tolliver head there, only to discover that the boy was only one of several who had disappeared over the previous five years. All of them teenagers, all unlikely runaways, all calling for Harper. Harper soon finds them, eight victims, buried in the half-frozen ground, 
all come to an unspeakable end. Afterwards, what she most wants to do is collect her fee and get out of town ahead of the media storm that's, that's about to descend. But when she's attacked and prevented from leaving, she reluctantly becomes a part of the investigation as she learns more than she cares to about the dark mysteries and long hidden secrets of Doraville. Knowledge that makes her the next person likely to rest in an ice cold grave. And that's the last one in that series. Then I will move on to the Aurora Tea Garden series. And then I'll do the Sookie's. St <laughs> I am, I keep getting tongue tied, but the truth is I'm literally tongue tied. I have a string in my tongue that's really far forward. So if I get tongue tied a lot, that's why I literally am tongue tied. Anyway, um, then I want to do the Sookie Stackhouse books <laughs> after, <laughs> after the Aurora Tea Garden books. The next two books that I have were actually recommended to me. Um, this one was recommended by my friend AJ Dunn and they have a page. If you want to watch it, I will put a link to their page down in the description box. And this one is Burn Town by Jennifer McMahon. I had just read The Invited by her and I thought it was so good. And so when they recommended that I read this book, I thought, okay, I'm definitely going to put it on my wish list. And I did end up just getting a copy. It looks brand new to me. I don't see any wear and tear anywhere on it. On the surface, Ashford, Vermont seems like a quaint New England college town, but to those who live among the shadowy remains of its abandoned mills and factories and beneath its towering steel bridges, it's known as Burntown. Ava Sandusky, who goes by the name Neko on the street, has been a part of Burntown's underworld for years. Ever since the night her father Miles drowned in a flood that left her and her mother Lily homeless. Now on the run from a man called Snake Eyes, Neko must rely on other burn town outsiders to survive. As the lives of those misfits intersect and as the killer from the Sandusky family, family's past draws ever closer, a story of edge of your seat suspense begins to unfurl. And this was a international thriller award winner. I just love getting used books or older books. I, I find that they have an energy to them that is kind of mystical. And I also like the thought of recycling. So that's why I do that. This next book was recommended by a viewer. I'm pretty sure it was recommended by Sherry. So thank you, Sherry, for recommending this book. This is Christmas at the Cat Cafe by Melissa Daly. You guys know I love cats. An engaging, pleasant read full of colorful characters with enough mentions of the Cat Cafe's cat's whiskers, cookies, and feline fancies to satisfy any appetite for a gentle, heartwarming story. This sounds so sweet. What I, what I like to do is around the middle of November, like up until the middle of November, I'll be reading my Halloween-ish books. And then once the middle of November hits, then I move into my, my Christmas slash holiday books and go through usually about January 15th. And in honor of Valentine's Day, I usually read a couple romance novels and then some, because of the new year, novels about starting over or going after your dreams or that kind of thing. I don't know, I have this whole system that I do. <laughs> and I, I guess I probably should have mentioned this sooner, but I will put how much I spent on each of these books somewhere up here. One of the things I realized was that I don't have enough graphic novels. I just read my last one. So what do I do if I happen upon the trope in that card game graphic novel? I, I don't know because I don't have any. But now I have two more. I bought two more of them and I'm very excited about that. Clockwork Lives 
by Kevin J. Anderson and Neil Pert. Isn't that pretty? Marinda Peak is a woman with a quiet, perfect life in a small village. She long ago gave up on her dreams and ambitions in order to take care of her ailing father, an alchemist and inventor. When he dies, he gives Marinda a mysterious gift, a blank book that she must fill with other people's stories and ultimately her own. Clockwork Lives is a steampunk Canterbury Tales that follows Miranda as she strives to change her life from a mere sentence or two to a true epic. But here's what it looks like inside. It's a pretty thick graphic novel. I like that it's hardbound too. I think if I if I love it and I want to keep it, it'll be easier to keep it in good quality over the years with it being hardback. The next book is All My Mother's Lovers by Ilana Massad. And sadly, this book did not come with a cover. Um, I am kind of disappointed because the cover is beautiful, but oh well, it is what it is. I, um, if I really love the book and I want to read it again, I will probably invest in a copy that has the cover though, because it's so pretty. So I'm going to set this down and go ahead and put an image of the cover up here so you can see it. Told over the course of a funeral and Shiva and written with enormous wit and wisdom, All My Mother's Lovers is, is an exciting debut novel from fiction writer and book critic Ilana Massad. A unique meditation on the universality and particularly of family ties and grief and a tender and biting portrait of sex, gender, and identity. It challenges us to question the nature of fulfilling relationships. Well, when I read that, I had to get the book. <laughs> It just sounds too good. How do you how do you not get that book when you read that? The next book that I got was actually a well, it is a classic from my childhood. I just had to have this book. Um, <laughs> I remember it being so good as a kid, and I don't know if it still is, but sometimes for me the appeal of YA is maybe it's a YA book that I read as a young person as opposed to uh, some of the ones that are out now I'm not saying they're not good but they're they're just very very different from what I read as a, a teenager uh, the copyright on this one is 1992 <laughs> it's Sweet Valley Twins and Friends Super Chiller The Ghost in the Bell Tower I if you remember these books, you probably remember this one because it was a really good book. I think for me personally, it was probably the best super chiller that Francine Pascoe wrote. And I thought it'd be fun to read this this Halloween season. The Ghost in the Bell Tower, Midsummer Nightmare. When the Wakefield twins are invited to their Aunt Helen's country inn, Stephen and Jessica are determined to use the eerie old mansion to scare their sister Elizabeth into believing in ghosts. But no matter what Stephen and Jessica do, logical Elizabeth always figures out their tricks. Then things start happening that even Elizabeth can't explain, and all the Wakefield kids are afraid that the end really is haunted. Will they make it through the summer sharing their vacation with an unfriendly ghost? Well, we know they'll make it through because they're Sweet Valley High, Sweet Valley U, but still, it's it's a really good book. Or I remember it being a really good book. I don't know if I still think it is, but They're There by Tommy Orange. This book follows 12 characters from Native communities, all traveling to the big Oakland powwow, all connected to one another in ways they may not yet realize. Among them is Jackie Redfeather 
newly sober and trying to make it back to the family she left behind. Dean Oxendine, pulling his life together after his uncle's death and working at the powwow to honor his memory. 14-year-old Oroville, coming to perform traditional dance for the very first time. Together, this chorus of voices tells us of the plight of the urban Native American grappling with a complex and painful history, with an inheritance of beauty and spirituality, with communion and sacrifice and heroism, hailed as an instant classic, There There is at once poignant and unflinching, utterly contemporary, and truly unforgettable. Halsey Street by Nema Coster. The glare is nothing to joke about here, is it? <laughs> Sorry. This is the story of a family, which means it's the story of imperfect and vulnerable creatures failing at love no matter their efforts. In Halsey Street, Nama Coster shows us one young woman's tangled efforts to return home and repair the intimacies we can hardly live without. It's a poignant, moving book written with deep empathy and sophistication. Investigate the nuances of the gentrified and the gentrifiers. Race, ethnicity, and class are masterfully challenged in this narrative of self-discovery and the quest to preserve one's heritage while honoring life-saving transformation. Doesn't that sound really, really good? And I love this cover. There are some covers that just draw me in, and there's other ones that's like, eh, I could do without that cover. This one is one I could do without. But this is one that my friend Kristen from Enter the Book recommended to me. So I will put a link to her page down below as well. It is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And I feel like you all know what this is about by now, right? Basically, it's about a woman who gets married to a guy she barely knows and a bunch of craziness ensues. <laughs> and then the other graphic novel that I got is Tom's Midnight Garden by Edith. No last name? by Edith. <laughs> I guess she's like Madonna. She does not need a last name. And this is a graphic adaptation of the Philippa Pierce classic. Tom thought a summer spent with his aunt and uncle in the country would be boring. But when their landlady's ancient grandfather clock strikes 13 times, Tom is transported back in time to a beautiful garden where he meets a young girl named Hattie. Tom and Hattie's time on, in the garden is almost too good to be true. Full of adventure, mystery, magic, and boundless fun. As the summer draws to a close, Tom desperately searches for a way to stay in the garden with Hattie forever. This book just look, I mean, it just looks beautiful anyway, but I had no idea that this story was even a classic. How fun though. I love this image right here. That is all of the books that I got at Better World Books. But wait, there's more. Oh yes, there is. There is more. I've got four books here that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I personally love getting books at the Dollar Tree. For me, um, if I don't buy them used and, or they're not a new release, the Dollar Tree's where it's at. Okay, this one has another cover that was actually, I guess these all have covers I really like. These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card. Look at this cover. Isn't that great? Part immigrant narrative, 
part ghost story, part historical fiction, part family drama, These Ghosts Are Family explores and illuminates the complexities of race and lineage in Jamaica and the United States. This is a bold, gripping, compassionate book. Sounds pretty good, right? Another wonderful cover, this book here. It's called A Wonderful Stroke of Luck by Ann Beatty. A very funny book. If Jane Austen had been crossed with Oscar Wilde and recrossed with Evelyn Wow, and the result plonked down among the semi-beautiful people of late 20th century media fringe America, the outcome might have been something like this. And the person that said that was Margaret Atwood. So, it sounds like it might be a pretty good book here. A razor-sharp, deeply felt new novel, the 21st book by Anne Beatty, about the complicated relationship between a charismatic teacher and his students and the secrets we keep from those we love. Okay, I'm intrigued. (laughs) Then we have this one here. This is called The Tenant, and this one was originally written in um, Denmark and it was translated to English and I'll just read you the synopsis on this one because I don't really know how to paraphrase this one and I didn't see any quotes that really did it justice. When a young woman is discovered brutally murdered in her own apartment with an intricate pattern of lines carved into her face Copenhagen police detectives Yeppe Korner and Annette Werner are assigned to the crime. In short order, they establish a link between the victim, Julie Stender, and her landlady, Esther De Laurenti, who's a bit too fond of drink and who's the host of a racist dinner of racist dinner parties with her artist friends. Esther is also a budding novelist. And when Julie turns up as a murder victim in this still unfinished mystery she's been writing, the link between fiction and real life grows both more urgent and more dangerous. But Esther's role in this twisted scenario is not quite as clear as it seems. Is she the culprit or just another victim trapped in a twisted game of vengeance? Annette and Yeppe must dig more deeply into the two women's pasts to discover the identity of the brutal puppet master pulling the strings in this heart-stopping literary thriller. Hailed as inconceivably thrilling, The Tenant is a work of stunning originality that will keep readers on the edge of their seats. And I love this cover. I love it when covers have a house or a building with windows and then there's someone in the window. And if you look really closely, it almost kind of looks like somebody's the edge of their elbow, maybe like with a sweater and then their arm or maybe somebody's turning and that's their hair flying. I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like somebody's in the window. And I love the inside of this book. Isn't that pretty? And then the last book that I got at the Dollar Tree, but also that I'm going to be talking about today, is Alive in Shape and Color. And one thing you may not know about me is I am an artist. I love to paint. And I do acrylic right now. Um, I used to do a bunch of watercolor. I'm kind of all over the place. Just whatever I'm in the mood for at that current time is what I do. It's all about expressing yourself, right? Um, So what this book is about is 17 paintings and the stories that they inspired. Some of the authors on here are Lee Child, Joyce Carol Oates, um, Jeffrey Deaver, Michael Connelly, 
There's quite a few on here. The San Francisco Chronicle says, For anyone who has puzzled over the vividly evocative yet frustratingly enigmatic works of the beloved Edward Hopper, this little volume is the perfect gift. Short stories by 17 writers, some famous. Oh, it's short stories. Okay. Like Joyce Carol Oates and Stephen King, and some less so dramatically start where the paintings leave off. As a, an artist and an avid re reader, it's really fascinating to think about what kind of stories different paintings might inspire in someone. Those are all the books that I got. You can see why I feel like I should take a break from buying books for a while. Obviously, I'll still be getting my book of the month. And if I see fit, one new release a month. But otherwise, I think I need to take a book buying break. I've got too many books at this point. I need to start reading through some of them before I want to buy many more. I mean, I just did a book unhaul and I replaced every book. So I know I'm addicted to books. What can I say? <laughs> if you've read any of these books, please let me know what you thought of them. If you want to read any of these books, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. I love you. Bye.